In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text from Philippians chapter 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Perhaps I'm a little biased, but I cannot imagine another knave so perfectly suited for Thanksgiving Day. We're nudged on to remember by the art that surrounds us of what our Lord has done for us and the call to join generations before us in praising him. We're nudged on by the joyful singing of a congregation of lives that are high doxologies to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we're nudged on by the message of this building itself. It's very architecture. You are blessed because Yahweh has come down to you. You didn't go up to him. In fact, you can't. But he will not fail to come down here and meet you in his holy, forgiving, life-giving word, in that word embodied in water in the Lord's Supper, in that word enfleshed in bread and wine to be his very body and blood here at this table. Paul's pastoral encouragement for us on this Thanksgiving Day, do not be anxious about anything, But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. I think it does kind of hit us upside the head, all of us here, even though I do think Paul is speaking as a pastor. He's speaking an encouraging word. You don't need to be anxious. You don't need to worry about these things. The Lord's got it. He's taking care of you. But there's not one of us here, not even the littlest of us, that doesn't have some anxiety and isn't anxious about things. And there are real medical conditions that require lots of care uh, to help get over anxiety or at least to mitigate its circumstances throughout our days. Those are real things. But, But Paul's urging here, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Isn't grounded in some sort of pop psychology. It's better for your thinking not to be anxious, which of course is absolutely true. Nor is it grounded in some simple self-help strategy. Although, without a doubt, casting all our cares on the Lord in thanksgiving for what we have here and now, for what he's done for us, and what we have in this very moment is inevitably helpful to us in getting out of a funk of ungrateful grumbling. If I could, just just two days ago, I was in one of these funks there having been wakened during the night by our obnoxious little dog with her congestive heart failure coughs. And and there I was grumbling about what was ahead in the day. And, And then I remember John Kleining saying, in a world where billions of things have gone right for us, we find those few little things that we don't like and we focus completely on those. And so the Lord used Kleinig's words by the power of the Holy Spirit to tap on my shoulder there to thank the Lord for the floor that my feet were on, installed beautifully by somebody who's here today. Thank you, David. And and to thank God for the heat that was pouring onto my feet at that very moment, the, the furnace that worked, the repairman that's fixed it, the gas line that brings natural gas to my home, all those people that work on that all over the place to make it happen. And then the Thanksgiving just kept coming and coming and coming and coming. It's sort of endless. The million things that are given to us without our notice every single day. And it does get us out of our funk, I think, to remember and give thanks that all of these things, not a single one of them do we deserve 
They're all gifts. But again, that's not what Paul's words are grounded in. No, what, what Paul's encouragement not to be anxious, but in everything by prayer and thanksgiving to throw our requests, our supplications to God, but that's grounded in his, what he wrote just before this, which is stunningly beautiful. He said, For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you, even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. Their glo- they glory in their shame with mindset on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And from it, we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to subject all things to himself. Therefore, my brothers whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. For many walk as enemies of the cross of Christ, It's only natural for humans to think that we know better than God. If if you don't take sin seriously, if you don't take sin as a real, tremendously awful cosmic problem, not some little smudge on us, although I can't imagine someone not taking sin seriously in our day, look around, all the anger and hatred and hostility and and then that outright brutality of this past year, including this past Sunday in Waukesha, which is where Hal Sinkbile, my predecessor, lives. How can anyone imagine that this is a good world or a world that isn't severely, terribly broken or that mankind itself isn't the problem Starting, by the way, with the very sinner whom you happen to know best, the one residing in your own body. But if you don't take sin seriously, then you won't take the cross of Jesus seriously either. And if the cross of Jesus isn't taken seriously, the self-donation of God himself to be damned in my place and yours, in the place of all people, then God's law and judgment isn't taken seriously either. And Paul weeps. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly, which is perhaps why Thanksgiving Day is called by so many Turkey Day. Isn't that fitting? The belly more important than the God who gives it. And their minds are set on earthly things as they enjoy and delight in that which they should be ashamed of. And so our thanksgiving is shallow and small. We thank God just for the food, or we're just thankful for it to some unknown being. Or we just thank people, which that's not a bad thing to thank people, but that's not the point. Or we're self-thankful. I'm thankful I'm not one of those awful people that vote for the other political party. Is it any wonder? Anxiety is dramatically on the increase in our day. But, but friends, beloved in the Lord, our citizenship is in heaven. And from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body so it will be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to subdue all things to himself. And of course, isn't that precisely the message that surrounds us here in the beautiful hymn of the Te Deum Laudamus depicted as it is. We're invited to join this family, this big, beautiful, strange family of the Holy Christian Church to remember this hymn of thanksgiving. We praise you, O God, and acknowledge you to be our God, that he made us that he made everything that fills our world 
We should have had a turkey in there, Ed, not just a peacock and an armadillo and a pig and a lamb and a bison. That he made this world, including sweet potatoes and farmers and doctors and body and soul and family and friends and all Christians, citizens of this heavenly kingdom, all of us, by the way, all Christians, living our lives facing the same direction facing this Lord who will transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body by his death and resurrection, which enable him to subdue all things to himself, including dementia and cancer and lymphoma and COVID and all the awful stuff that fills our broken world. This king, the king, the king of glory whose incarnation changed absolutely everything. And all of our life, from praying with our families depicted over there to the heartbreak of mourning and weeping at the death of a loved one, as many of us are mourning the death of loved ones, and as a congregation we are too, all of it is lived facing our Lord who knows our suffering, who joined us in it, all so that he could bless us here and now and bring us into a life eventually where there is no suffering or pain or trouble or tears or heartbreak or mourning at all. It's in this context, isn't it, that Paul's words make total sense. Oh, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests, your worries, your fears, your doubts, your troubles, let them be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, the very one who was born of Mary, who suffered, who died, who was buried, who rose, who lives and reigns, and is coming back to bring you home, this one. Paul wrote this letter from prison. In thanks for a generous gift that the Philippians had sent him by Epaphras, Epaphroditus, rather, who, who took a trip that would be 600 miles as a crow flies. It was obviously much longer than that, 600 miles. Now, thankfully, there were no TSA screenings, and traveling, traveling in that way was easier, but I think overall traveling was a bit more challenging then. And he came anyway. Because the Philippians were so thankful to God for the saving work of Jesus Christ that they loved Paul who had proclaimed it and they wanted to take care of him in prison. And they gathered this offering and a man was willing to go all the way to bring it to him. And Paul says, thank you. I thank God for you. Oh, sure, he's Paul. Sure, I could have made it without your gift. I've learned how to handle it when I got a lot or a little. Isn't that interesting? But God used your gift to serve me and to give me joy and to give you joy in the giving. (laughs) So standing here in front of this congregation, thank you. Thank you for loving our teachers and our principals and our pastors and our musicians, and our custodians, and everybody. Thank you for working hard. Thank you for going out of your way. Okay, you didn't travel 600 miles, but you came away to give thanks to this God and to gather up to give those to those in need. It's beautiful work. It's being brought in to the giving of our God. And listen to this blessing, which is for you as well, that Paul wrote to those dear Philippians. <laughs> and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Every need, all of them. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen, he writes. 
This, this is your God, friends. This is our song. So let us sing. Thanks be to God in Jesus' name. The peace of God which passes all our understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.